the Fandom Fighters Podcast. What's going on, guys? The Fandom Fighters are back. Woo! Fandom Fighters in the house. What? What? Woo! You shouldn't have went on with that. You should have just looked at me and went, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> That's what you should have done. Uh, yeah, yeah. Welcome to our Not Safe for Work <laughs> podcast. I am Frank Wack. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Seawood Director. And uh, we're just going to get started. Same way we do every week. Um, let's talk about what we've been watching, what we've been listening to, what we've been playing. You go first. Oh my god, I'm going first this time? <laughs> I feel so honored, to with Thank you. I'll let you Just, start your the podcast The animosity first. is so real up in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, watching? Eh, not much has changed. Um, I finished Tokyo Ghoul. <laughs> I, well, I say finished. I finished the first season of Tokyo Ghoul, because that's all Hulu has in English. <laughs> <laughs> so, we can talk about that on a different day or why I why I watch dub versus sub. Um you know, because I'm American, but whatever. Anywho, um I started rewatching Hayate the Combat Butler, which is my favorite um not dubbed anime yet. What is when, that about? Um it's that this guy, right? <laughs> Shock, surprise. Yeah, he um <laughs> he ends up getting involved. I think she's a princess. I don't remember. I think she's a princess. She's like a high member of royalty, basically. He ends up becoming her butler due to like her saving his life, basically. His life. Basically, she, she gave him a house and shit, a uh, place to stay. And so in exchange, she's like her butler. And she keeps doing all this like not royalty shit and he keeps having to fix it. <laughs> um, and it, the reason I love this show so much is because it has a lot of nods to like old video games, old anime, stuff like that. It has a lot of like nostalgic references that I'm like, I get that. <laughs> I got that reference. Um, my favorite one so far though, she ends up getting lost in the middle of like downtown or something, and Hayate is like running through the town, and there's a scene where he's like sneaking in a big cardboard box. <laughs> And he pops up, and he's full on in like uh, big boss attire <laughs> with the, the fucking cigar and everything. It's great. Metal Gear. It's so good. I love that show so much. It's so funny. Um, listening to I've actually like I've been listening to a lot of My Chemical Romance lately. Uh, it's me and my girlfriend's favorite band. Um, at least for our relationship. I don't I don't know if I have a favorite band. That's why I say it that way. Um. I thought Selena Gomez was your favorite. <laughs> I do like Selena Gomez. <laughs> no, she is not my favorite. I like uplifting music, man. And it's funny, I say I listen to My Chemical Romance. I like uplifting music. Fucking <laughs> dead by My Chemical Romance comes on. Yeah. <sighs> undertones, people. Undertones. Um, <laughs> well, I listen to a lot of like actual music. And by actual music, I mean I don't, I'm not listening to my chip tunes right now. And I'm not listening to, like, anime themes, which is, it's real music, don't get me wrong, but it's not like, you know, it's not like the thing you would hear on the radio. Yeah. And that's what I mean by real music. Um, playing? <laughs> Who has time for that? I um, do! I'm still playing Street Fighter V. <laughs> <laughs> I planned on playing Undertale this week on, on my roommate's big 65-inch TV. How'd that go? I didn't get around to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, keywords meant to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah that's it for me i've been living a boring going to conventions and working on videos type of life that's not very boring <laughs> i true. mean the going to conventions part yeah yeah it was fun a2f, but, A2F was a lot of fun we'll talk about but, that yeah in a minute. we'll talk about that later in the podcast so your turn my turn yay um watching i've been watching a lot of youtube because oh, as, sure. yeah me too actually <laughs> just well like as that. we'll get into later in the podcast i have not been able to find a lot of stuff on Um, streaming sites like netflix or amazon prime that i'm really that interested in watching um so i've been watching a lot of youtube but but see what you should be watching oh (laughs) you're funny yeah no 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 like i opened up netflix and i just saw Dorado around i'm like nope (laughs) that's my weekly jab at Dorado. yeah fuck yourself (laughs) um no but seriously though um i've been watching a lot of youtube I found a new channel. It's um, El Nage. El Nage. Uh, it's like it's spelled I L space N E I G E. It's a really weird name, but um, dude does a lot of reviews um, on s- movies that I grew up with. So like Pokemon. So like the Pokemon movies. He did Atlantis. 
uh, Treasure Planet. So like a lot of stuff that I grew up watching, he reviews. It's kind of interesting to see. I think I was like eleven or twelve when Treasure Planet became, was in, was around. Did you see it? Not in the theater. I mean, and it's been I was eleven or twelve yeah. when I've last seen it. So well, I didn't get to see it in theaters. I I did get to see Lilo and Stitch though. But um, no, I love Treasure Planet. It's one of my favorite Disney movies. I should go back and rewatch it. Um, yeah, but, Tre- Treasure Planet and um, um Atlantis are both really underrated Disney films. Yeah, I mean, well, the the thing is that it, it's not the typical Disney film. Yeah. There's that period where they were trying to stray away from what they normally do, um, and they caught a lot of flack for that. Did you mean Frozen? <laughs> Fun fact: I still haven't seen that movie. Well, like, the only reason that Frozen is really notable is because it takes the Disney tropes and then turns them on their head, and then turns it on its head. So it's but, like the Majora's Mask of the Disney films, kind of. <laughs> um, but then, like the reason that Treasure Planet and Lilo and Stitch and Atlantis are so notable is because they don't is because they just abandon the yeah, tropes. They don't it's, even it's they, they, they do not want to deal with them. Um, but I've been watching a lot of YouTube, uh, listening, I've been li- listening to, um, the same, um, a lot of the same podcasts, so, um, Nintendo Voice Chat from IGN, uh, Curblogs, uh, Console Club, plug in Console Club, go watch it right now, listen to it right now, do it, do it, do it, do it, um, <laughs> yeah, cross promotion for the win. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the Pizza Party Podcast, which is done by... Pizza Party Podcast. Yeah, it's done by Rebel Taxi. Uh, it's really good. Triple P. Yeah, Triple P. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then playing. I've been playing uh, Pokemon Omega Ruby. I still haven't gotten that goddamn Magmi. <laughs> 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 but I did get a um, Carvana that had the nature that I wanted, and I evolved that into a Sharpedo. Um, and at A2F, I actually bought Chrono Trigger, and I started that last night. And what do you think so far? The, the combat system confuses me because, like, it's turn based. You'll get very used to it. Like, it, <laughs> well, no, like it's turn based. So, like, I'll go and like choose to attack an enemy, and then they'll attack yeah. me before I attack yeah, them. Okay, I see what you're saying. That, yeah, that confused me. I didn't really get it. But it? you'll you'll get it eventually. Yeah. Um, and then where are you at? Just curious. Uh, legitimately, I'm in like that first forest that you go into. I didn't oh, okay. get to play a whole lot of it. Okay, so um, you did get past the millennial fair though. Yeah, I got past the Millennial Fair, though. Like, I, basically, I was just playing it um, while riding in the car um, oh, okay. last night, because I had to go all the... Because I, I had to go meet some family for, like, a bunch... Like, a lot of my family on my dad's side were just getting together to go eat dinner, and we had to drive out for that, so... Here comes the new challenge. Full Metal Alchemist. Man. <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist. 2004. I was... I was nine. I was eleven years old. <laughs> uh, I mean, which means I couldn't have been eleven when Treasure Planet came out because it was like two thousand one, <laughs> wasn't it? Uh, you don't even remember when you were born. Yeah. Um, nah, but did you watch Full Metal Alchemist when it first aired on TV? Yes, I remember. It was, it was Adult Swim at the time. Yeah. Um, because Toonami was gone and it didn't come back yet. Well, no, Toonami was still around, but it's only on Cartoon Network back then. Anywho, yeah, um, with the original se- when the original series was right. on, I remember like them like pumping it for like a month, and I'm like, "This show looks awesome! I can't wait to see it." And it was just as good as I wanted it to for a little while. Um, <laughs> like, okay, it's a full of Alchemist, isn't it? It's not a bad show. It's a really, 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 really good show. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Um, full Metal Alchemist is the anime that got me back into anime. Like I got out like. When I was a kid, you know, I watched all the typical anime that you watch when you're a kid. Right. You know, basically everything on Toonami, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, all that, all, all that shit. And then I was like, you know what? I don't really care for this anymore. So I stopped watching it. And that was because Toonami started, like, basically went away. Right. So no more Naruto to watch, except on Disney XD, where it was absolute shit. Like, they sen- they, they, they censor a whole bunch of shit, basically. They censored basically everything. Because they got Shippuden. Right, yeah, yeah, they yeah. got like yeah, the, you took Naruto. the bloody, gory, amazing Naruto yeah, you t- and yeah, you take, censored the fuck out of you it. Take, huh? Yeah, you take the bloody, gory, amazing Naruto <laughs> to a more conservative <laughs> network and you think it's going to do okay? No. I still um, wonder how that sales pitch worked. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they basically only got through like the first arc and then can't and then took it off the air. That sucks. Because um, it was just so bad. But, um, I kind of want to watch that now, just <laughs> just to watch the train wreck. 
Well, honestly, it's just more boring than anything. <laughs> Literally, it's just Gara just standing there for like four episodes, <laughs> and that's basically the battle between him and um. Daedara. Like, it's basically <laughs> him just standing there for, like, four episodes. It's boring as all hell. <laughs> um, and I'm surprised true. that I actually got it. Like, because I, I wanted the Naruto Shippuden movie for Christmas one year. Mm-hmm. Um, my parents couldn't find it, so they just got me a random, like, DVD of Naruto Shippuden. From, like, Walmart? Or... Yeah, and it, um... Oh, man. I think it was, like, volume four or something. It was actually, like, two of the episodes on it were actually episodes I had seen on TV and it was like way better. <laughs> I was like, what are they, like, what are they doing to the right. show? No. We have gotten way off topic. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, it's what got me back into anime. I don't think I've ever really dropped off of anime. Like, mm-hmm. like there was a time where I stopped watching as much. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think I've ever, other than like, the last like three years because of where I lived, but that was because of where I lived and I couldn't get, I didn't have good enough internet to watch anime. That's basically what it was. Um, yeah, Full Metal Armors is a great show. Um, so is Brotherhood. It stars a, uh, it stars a uh, Vic Mignogna and I don't know the guy that plays Alphonse's name. Yeah. Um. Well, what I will say, um, yeah, we can't remember his name, but. The actor they got to play him was a child actor, yeah. which was perfect for Alphonse because yeah. you know he is a child, and it was really, really interesting. I um, really want to interview him though. It, yeah, it'd be really cool such just to an see. Interesting question to ask, you know, because you know how voice acting is done with like you know you have to match the flaps and yeah, you have to do all stuff. But being a kid <laughs> yeah. and going through that, like being a kid and having to speak into a metal bowl. That's how they, That's how they got the oh, like wow. reverberation noise. Oh, was wow. he literally was speaking into a metal bowl? That's crazy. Yeah. Um, the things you learn when you put on um, the commentaries on DVDs. I see. Um, I think. Uh, I think it was Aaron. Yeah, it's Aaron Dismuke. Dismuke. I think that's how I, I'm probably butchering his I last will name. Butcher the hell out of that name. If yeah, I but his first name's him. Aaron. And if you go on his IMDb, he's known for Full Metal Alf. Um, full Metal... Full Metal Alphonse. <laughs> full Metal <laughs> Alphonse. Full... No, no. He's known say? for Full Metal Alchemist, Full Metal Alchemist Conqueror of Shambhala, and oh. Full Metal Alchemist... Letting it load. And The Broken Angel, which is just the first PS2 game. <laughs> oh, I see. Um, which I have, by the way. We should play that at, like, at some point as like a Let's Play. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> I, I don't want to like go into spoilers or anything, so I'm trying to figure out how to talk about the story without talking about the story. I think, know? okay, I think talking about everything up to episode 24 <laughs> would be fine. No, because episode 25 is when shit gets real. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's like, and the equivalent of that in Brotherhood is episode 10, for anyone who knows. I think it's episode 10. So least. it's like, the story is between these two brothers who... Just want to fix the wrongs that they've done. Well, kind of, yeah. So basically, <laughs> um, the dad's a the, the dad's a deadbeat. You know, he he left for the store one day to go get milk and then so, never pay back. He doesn't put you know he doesn't pay child support or anything. Voiced by Scott McNeil. In the really yes. Um, in the original or Brotherhood. I think both. That doesn't sound right. No, I think the voices are different. Okay, um, you keep talking. Yeah, but basically, so. Their mom's a single mom. Um, they live in like a rural area. Anyway, so their dad was an alchemist. He did a lot of research, and he left a lot of that research behind. And what is an alchemist, Seawood? An alchemist is basically alchemy is the science of understanding what um, understanding matter, and then basically like reconstructing it. Yeah, understanding, um, deconstructing, and reconstructing matter into a different form. So. You know, and it's based off of what people thought was real science back in, like, the 1500s and stuff. Right. Um, in fact, Hohen, Hohen, the character of Hohenheim, um, his name actually comes from a real-life alchemist um, whose oh. name was Von, whose name actually was Hohenheim, which is really cool. The more you know, yeah. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell that this is my favorite anime? Because I have all the trivia. Um, <clears throat> all of the trivia. Yeah. But basically... The kids find all of his research and stuff, and they learn how to do alchemy. Um, Looks like uh, Scott McNeil voiced, voiced Hohenheim for the original series in Conqueror of Shambhala. Cool. Um, which Conqueror of Shambhala 
basically continues the story of the original series and is a movie. Yeah. But um, basically, they learn alchemy, and then they're and then the worst tragedy that could ever happen befalls them. Their mom dies. Yeah. And they decide that they're going to use alchemy to bring her back. Yeah, breaking the laws of alchemy. And then they don't fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> they... <laughs> Basically, Edward loses a leg. Alphonse essentially dies. He Alphonse lost, loses his body. body yeah. yeah. Um, and Edward sacrifices one of his arms to put Alphonse's soul into a suit of armor. That's just lying around the basement. <laughs> yeah. Like, they never explain where that armor comes from. I mean, That's knowing funny, the backstory actually. of Hohenheim, it could kind of make sense, but not really. Not really. <laughs> um, like, I'm not going to go into why it might make sense, because that's spoiler territory, but... Um, right. So now they want to find a way to get their bodies back because, yeah. you know... Because they done fucked up. Because they done <laughs> fucked up. Um, That's 90% of anime, though, isn't it? <laughs> Just want to fix, fix the wrongs that you did because you done fucked up. Yeah. Luckily for <laughs> luckily for Edward, um, because this is a magical fantasy world, uh, there is a kind of prosthetic that he gets called auto mail. It's basically... Metal prosthetics that let you do like actual fine motor movements. The shit, I'm waiting for 3D printing to get around to doing. <laughs> well, actually, there, there are people working on that right now. If you take my own damn arm for fucking auto <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, um, so the so Edward joins the military to be able to you know find a way to learn, uh, you know, to find a way to get their bodies back, and mm-hmm. they go on adventures and stuff, and <laughs> they go on adventures. Well, that I mean, basically, yeah. Um, the original series ran for. 51 episodes and the no i have have it right here hang on i'm pretty sure it was 51 like season one's like 25 episodes season two is 26 oh i'm on the manga that's why oh yeah um now if you want to talk about brotherhood i don't know how long that one went up can you look up that sure um but you talk about what brotherhood is yeah so they made the original series in like 2003 2004 and it was really good everybody really liked it and it, however, it was based off a manga, which at the time was incomplete. Yeah. So they decided to just go off on their own yeah. tangent and do their own story, which, in my opinion, is still a really good story. It's decent. Yeah, <laughs> but a lot of people still wanted to see the original story animated. So they decided in 2009 to bring back Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah. And essentially, um, this ran for... Did you find it? Oh, yeah. Um, 60, 64, I think. It said 64 episodes. 64 episodes. From April 5th, 2009 to July 4th, 2010. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and basically the first 10 episodes recap basically the first season of Fullmetal Alchemist, the original. Right. Um, with a few minor changes. Mm. And from that point onward, it goes um, into a story that is a lot closer to the original manga. Oh, and uh, Markiplier dies, guys. <laughs> Markiplier dies. <laughs> Have you not seen the pictures on Facebook that put Maze Hughes and Markiplier side by side? They're identical. Actually, I was going to avoid that um, spoiler, but I mean... Whatever, I'm sorry. I mean, sorry. at this point, most people know. That was so. my fault. Oh, it's well. okay. Um, Markiplier, Markiplier dies. dies, guys. <laughs> he does kind of look like Markiplier. He looks so um, like Markiplier. Yeah. But um, that's actually... Um, although one thing about that and people knowing about it is that, um, when the original show was airing, a lot of people actually knew that he died. Mm. So Funimation actually took that and used that a lot in their marketing nice. for the original series. Like, buy the DVD so you can see him die. <laughs> in English. <laughs> in English. <laughs> like, you can probably look it up on YouTube. Like, there it's actually hilarious. is, like, a clip of, like, um, that was, like, the it's ending really of, like, one of their ads for it. Um... a lot of work to do. Bye-bye. Full Metal Alchemist, coming soon. That's <laughs> so good. Nah, but it's it's a great show. Um, both of them are. I personally think Brotherhood, Brotherhood is better. Um, I can't say that damn name. You can't say V's, but... <laughs> it's, it's uh, but okay. I, I, think it, I think it's better um, than the original. Really but I think the original... like. I think the original still has merit. The original has a ton of merit. Yeah. And honestly, I think there's a lot more um, interesting subtext in there, a lot more interesting themes that you can look at and talk about, um, which I will not be looking at and talking about because, one, we don't have enough time for that, and two, it's been a while since I actually watched that whole series yeah. beginning to end. Um, but yeah, like I think they're both really interesting. It's had two movies, um, several OVAs. I still haven't seen The Star of Milius. Um Oh, The Sacred Star of Milos? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's good. A lot of people did not like that. So, really? Yeah. So that came out after 
Brotherhood. God, I hope it's still on Netflix. It, I think it is. Um, if not, I can just let you borrow the Blu-ray. But um, <laughs> of course, I own it. Um, <laughs> but um, that came out after Brotherhood ended, and it basically takes place like somewhere in there. Um, it's a filler movie, but as far as filler movies go, it's okay. A lot of people right. didn't like it because they actually changed the art style. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, it's a lot sketchier i think i'm not really sure how to describe it um it's a lot rougher looking right, okay um it's still nice to look at and you get the same voice cast back for it um although some characters come in there you know, like come into the movie and literally contribute absolutely nothing that's funny like for example um winry's in the movie right she has like no business being in this <laughs> movie because like, at all. Like, she doesn't really contribute hardly anything to the movie. But she's in there. Um, Same thing. With, like, they literally have... Uh, what's the bald dude's name? I can't remember. Um, Major Armstrong, yeah. Oh, okay. They yeah. have him come in there. Major <laughs> Alex Louise Armstrong. Yeah. <laughs> this technique has been passed down the Armstrong family line for generations. They, uh, pose and... <laughs> Just pose. And have pose. sparkles come out. <laughs> Um, create amazing statues. <laughs> they literally have him come into the movie, and he has like one line. That's great. <laughs> like I love seeing him again, but he does nothing. <laughs> He's literally in this movie to hand a note to um to Mustang, and that's it. That's all he does, and it's okay. But still, I got you. Conqueror of Shambhala is the better movie. He's so good. Um, and you know, it's interesting getting to see you know, Edward fight Nazis, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Conqueror of yeah. Shambhala has Nazis for so, some uh, reason. <laughs> so to recap, Full Metal Alchemist, great anime, you should watch it. It's got a yeah. wonderful voice cast and a compelling story. Yeah. Who's your favorite character? Oh, man, don't do that to me. <laughs> like, who's one of your favorite characters then? I should be a troll and say Shao Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> He's an interesting character. For, then... for the life of me, I love the <clears throat> memes that everyone hates. All of the uh, the memes going on Facebook that we won't get into. Oh my god, the dog one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think they're hilarious. The cow goes moo. Yeah, the dog goes Edward. <laughs> Edward. <laughs> it's just, oh god. That, dude, I... Okay, so... Whenever I watched Full Alchemist, I didn't know any of the spoilers, pretty much. Right. Um, Because I never really properly watched the show. Mm-hmm. So... I'm buying all these DVDs. I'm like, this is awesome. I get to this episode. I'm like, oh, no. And then, like, this is really early on in season one, so uh-huh. it's not that much to spoil. But when that thing dies and who kills it, I'm just like, oh, shit. And then we've already spoiled this, Mace Hughes dies. When that yeah. happened, yeah. dude, I fucking, I, I was on the verge of tears then. I was just like, no, no. It's the exact reason why I refused to watch Gurren Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like this hit me way more than Gurren Logan did. Which, by the way, that character is on my computer right now as my <laughs> desktop background. Nice, perfect time. Uh, but- as for favorite characters, I think I think I don't, it's, Ed is one of my favorite characters because of his character. Yeah, um, is very is very deep character. Yeah, there's um, a lot of stuff that goes into there's him. lots of conviction. There's lots of. <laughs> thought behind you know why he does yeah. the things that he does i really like his logic yeah he thinks of everything in terms of um alchemy and the rules of alchemy yeah. um which is really interesting like the whole thing of like a, a equivalent exchange you know barry the chopper has to be in that list somewhere <laughs> jerry jewel jerry jewel <laughs> one of my favorite things about editing the interview for jerry jewel was i got to rewatch a little bit of Fullmetal alchemist just to get clips of barry the chopper <laughs> barry the chopper oh my gosh she's so much fun and I don't know, it's interesting looking at, like, how they treated him in, like, both series. Yeah. Because in the first one, you actually get to see him when he's a human. Yeah. Yeah, which is really interesting. Um, And, you know, Jerry Jewell, you know, as, you know, playing Barry the Chopper, playing a woman, which is interesting <laughs> um, <laughs> to watch. <laughs> um, And then, like, you actually get to see him when he's human, like, proper human. And then, like, in Brotherhood... Like, you do get to see his human form, but it's complicated. And he actually does contribute a lot more to the plot in that series. Right. Um, You're going to go into Brotherhood. I don't know why I keep wanting to call him Lao. That's not his name. Um, Lin? Lin, yeah. Wait, no, not Lin. um, No, Lin is the girl. Uh, 
You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about the Prince of Shing. The Prince of Shing. Yeah. I God, why, why am I blanking on his name? Um, I will be looking this up. You talk about him. Um, he's, I don't know. I really like the characters that are like mischievous and and like witty and like sarcastic witty, like kind of like Deadpoolish. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. That's just why I like him so much. Yeah. That and how much of the story like revolves around him, because I don't want to get the spoilers again yeah sorry um hold on one second uh i know this guy's name hold on i will find it he's like a he's like an awesome little kitty <laughs> what i don't know <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my uh like i think oh my gosh i'm sorry uh todd habercorn plays this character though <laughs> i found it it's like ling his name is ling, ling. yao yeah ling. see um, that's close yeah uh, I said Lin because I've been watching a little bit of Korra lately. Um, but no, Ling is a lot of fun in the yeah. show. He shows up in like the second it's like, part. It's like um, the comic relief, but he actually matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like he starts off with just comic relief, and then as the show goes on, he becomes like one of the major so, players. Thank God he doesn't. He doesn't. Um, what's the what am I? How am I trying to say this? Um, he doesn't. <clears throat> he doesn't pass the sexy lamp test. Sexy lamp test. <laughs> Do you remember that? <clears throat> we went to that panel on Sunday. Uh, I vaguely remember. Um, uh, I so think... the sexy lamp test. If you're writing a story and you can replace a character with a sexy lamp and nothing changes, then you don't need that character. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like the and like the things that like he does and like what happens to him yeah. around the middle of the series is really interesting. It's really interesting. Um, they they do a lot of like really interesting things and like a lot of interesting turns. But yeah. Yep. Um, watch Full Metal Alchemist, watch this, watch the other series, watch both of the movies, um, my recommendation would be watch the original series first, and then watch Conqueror of Shambhala, because that completes that story. Yeah. Um, and then, and then go into Brotherhood, because I've met a lot of people who watch Brotherhood for, first, and then cannot go back to the original series. I can see that. <laughs> like, that is something I hear all the time, and it's not because the original is it's bad. just way different. Yeah, it's just that it's so way different. Way different. Yeah. And there's some people who just get in their heads like, this is what Full Metal Alchemist is supposed to be. Yeah. And honestly, that's not the correct way of thinking about it. If you look at them at two very identical <clears throat> different animes, it works out. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> the first series, like, it does, like... like th- it's there just is a coincidence some... the, name, the main character's name is Edward and Bullshit. I mean, you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> well, like, they, they both cover they both the same Full ground. Well, like, well, like they, both, they both cover the same ground right. um, at the beginning. But I think the first series, you know... It does go a lot more in depth on a lot of those things, um, and honestly, Brotherhood just expects you to have seen the first like series because like it yeah, does recap, but it recaps really fast and really briefly. Yeah. So like for example, uh, the character of Yoki, uh, do you remember him? <laughs> oh, okay. Basically, he's in charge of like a mining town, and okay, yeah. yeah, he's doing like some really shitty stuff to the people. Yeah. And Edward gets rid of him. Um, they spend a whole episode on that. In the yeah, original they, series. yeah, they spend an entire episode on that in the original series. They give him one throwaway line in Brotherhood, and then, like, just later on in the series, he just shows up, and <laughs> you're supposed to know who this character is. That's funny. Without actually having met him. But yeah, uh, the show's really good. I highly recommend it. Uh, the OVAs are actually kind of interesting, but are not really necessary to watch. But, you know, check those out if you have the time. So, uh, I kind of forced this topic on Seawood, because he didn't really care. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, the Game Grumps, were actually on the local news in California recently. Hey, I'm Grump. I'm not so Grump. And we're the Game Grumps. Yeah, the lights just flickered. Uh, <laughs> it heard my singing. Yeah, they wanted to that's die. That's probably what it was. <laughs> um, but the, the the big the big thing, the reason why why I wanted to bring this up, is, you know, because the first thing anybody thinks, okay, who cares? The Game Grumps are on TV. Whatever. Move on. Next topic. Yeah. But it does matter a lot because it's there's there's a lot said in the the video the news piece mm-hmm. um, about how it's subjective or how online entertainment yeah. um, is really starting to take hold it's of a, a lot of people. It's projected, I think, is how they said it. It's projected that that kids uh, between the ages of like eight to like twenty two, like our age, yeah, um, will. Like, in the future, kids, our kids won't use TV at all. 
Yeah, it said that like they won't even have cable or satellite yeah. television. They'll, they'll be using smartphones and, and tablets and, and computers tablets. to yeah. get their um, entertainment off of sites like YouTube. Yeah, exactly. And that that's really interesting to think about because, yeah, like you know, internet yeah. killed the video star. So yeah. like <laughs> TV killed the radio star, internet killed the video star. Um, and it, well, it's really interesting though because, like, for example, okay, I go when, whenever I'm at college, I don't watch a whole lot of TV. I honestly don't. Uh, most of my entertainment um, comes from YouTube. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of YouTubers on there, uh, you know, around who I like to watch. Um, and the the cool thing about YouTube is that it's so vast. Yeah, it, it's a very it's an open forum. Yeah, it, it appeals. It literally hands you a soapbox and says, "Here, stand on this, say whatever you want." Yeah, and it's really interesting because you can watch anything from you know a funny cat video <laughs> to you know a highly you know detailed look into the themes you know and messages behind you know video games yeah, and, and the complex you know yeah. ideas that come across in those yeah, that you may not video even games think about. in real life for yeah. you know thoroughly thoroughly reviewing video games yeah can you tell i only watch video game YouTubers? <laughs> i mean that's that's primarily what i watch too although i watch um some movie stuff as it's well it's it's really cool to think about you know there's a vast world of YouTube that I don't understand because yeah. I don't watch, you know, the vloggers or um, the React Fine Bros videos or... You're not missing a whole lot there. Yeah, um. <laughs> you know I mean, but it's like, I don't... I only really watch... I sit in my little gaming realm and mm-hmm. I really only watch the popular YouTubers there. Um, I watch Matt Pat, I watch The Completionists, I watch Game Grumps. Yeah. Um, but even there, like, there's a ton of content there and yeah. it's really interesting the stuff they're doing. Like, Matt Pat... Like, just that one channel oh God, with, yeah. like, what, like, six million plus subscribers at this point? I think so, yeah. Like, it is so interesting, like, all the stuff that goes on there. And I really do believe that while you'll probably never get TV going away completely, like, there's all, like, that's always going to stick around, similar to how radio really didn't die off. Um, and the newspaper still hasn't died off. Um, I think TV's not going to completely die off. But... 6,300,000 right yeah. now. Yeah. But you're definitely going to get a lot of people going to YouTube for their entertainment. And for the record, the first episode of Game Lab went up last week. Oh, really? Yes. I need to hop on there and watch that. <laughs> I thought it was coming out later in June, no. so. All right. But yeah, I've said my piece. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I'm really just going to copy and paste most of it. It's really mm. interesting. Um, YouTube, especially, is a forum where you can you can get the news you want. You know, do you care about politics? No? Fuck those guys. Watch this. Yeah. Um, do you like video games? Yes? So here's a slew of video game people you here's can watch. Here's a million people yeah. playing the latest video games. <laughs> like, literally, we're not even kidding. A million people <laughs> who do this kind of things. Do you like wrestling? Yes? Here's a slew of people that do videos on wrestling. Do you like movies? Well, here's a bunch of people talking about movies. Do you want the news? Here you go. I mean, it's literally whatever you want to, whatever you want to see, it's there. Are like, you too lazy to pay for television? Here, just watch the best. <laughs> watch somebody screenshot the entire <laughs> episode. Well, no, no, no. I'm just talking about like clips. Like, for right, example, yeah. like, for example, and I know other people do this. I love Saturday Night Live. I think right. they can be really funny sometimes. I don't watch that on TV. I wait like till like Sunday or Monday when they when they're gonna post the best parts of it up on their yeah. YouTube channel because they have their own channel. Even. Yeah. With two and a half million subs, good God! Yeah, it's six, almost six thousand videos. <laughs> Jesus Christ! But yeah, but, but yeah, um, I think it's really interesting to think about, you know, how times are changing. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's bad. Yeah, when when South Park, you know, decides to make fun of you, I think you've made it big. <laughs> <laughs> um, No Man's Sky, which nobody considers PC to be a legit gaming platform well even though it is i mean other than those who are like pc master race um but the consoles don't think of pc as as another platform platform. i know what you're talking about so they would consider it a ps4 exclusive yeah well that's why i said ps4 console exclusive anyways no man's sky um was slated for a release um later in june but got pushed back to august yeah which is what a month two months about two months which isn't, which is not that bad of a delay. It could be worse. Yeah, it could be a lot it could worse. Be a it, lot worse. It could be my number nine, where it was pushed back for a year for some stupid ass and reason. And then another six months, and then another six months. And that game's never coming out. Um, 
But it has a release date now, actually. Yeah. But anyways, it's supposed to come out. Yeah. Like so No Man's Sky got delayed. I'm personally really interested in this game. Um, I think it looks really cool. It's just this big, expansive universe that you can go through, yeah. um, and you know, do whatever the hell you want. It's it's kind of like Minecraft in that it's just a, a giant open sandbox. To right. Do whatever. I wouldn't say that I'm interested. I'm interested to see how it sells and how it, like, what will happen. Yeah, because it is a new IP. Um, and it and it's done by a relatively small studio, which is what's really crazy about it because it's supposed to be super huge and immersive and all this yeah. different crap. That's why it's been taking so long to make, probably. Um, but the real reason we're talking about the delay is the reaction, the volatile reaction, like like literal throw up volatile reaction. It's yeah, ridiculous. So, like I said, I'm really interested in the game, and it got pushed back. Now, I was disappointed, as one would naturally be. When, you know, a game you're really looking forward to gets pushed back. Kingdom Hearts 3. <clears throat> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Final Fantasy 15. <laughs> Money number 9. Uh, uh, but, oh, fuck you, Square Enix. Uh, sorry, I'm done. Uh, man, you need to get that cough I, checked I out. I need to get that out of my system. I'm sorry. Anyways. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you, you're naturally kind of upset. Do you go and threaten people's lives over I mean, that? <laughs> Legitimately, the people who are making this game have gotten so many death threats. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And I will never understand why somebody feels that, you know, it's worth, like, you know, friend... Like, like they're probably, you know, hollow. But still, just putting... <laughs> just going and saying... Bleach threat- reference? <laughs> no, I'm not. That's not a Bleach reference. Um, it can be if you want it to be. <laughs> but, oh anyway, but anyways... Um, <laughs> But I will never understand why you feel why someone would feel the need to go and threaten somebody's life. Yeah, even jokingly, over a video game. Even jokingly, it's fucked up. Yeah, it is fucked um, up. That that would be like, let's say, like, okay, Bethesda announced Fallout Four, um, and they said that they had to delay it. Would you threaten somebody's life over that? Honestly, would you? Would like it makes no sense why you would do this to somebody. I mean, okay. Especially with the Kotaku thing. Oh, yeah. Like, you want to talk about that? Because you know more about that than so, I do. So, uh, looking up an article to, to read before the podcast started, I found an article on Kotaku about how a guy, what's his name? Jason uh, Schreer. I'm going to go with Schreer. Um, Jason Schreer posted news on the delay. He was just talking about how the company who made this game was delaying the game. He has nothing to do with it. There's just like there's no there's no connection other than the fact that he is reporting on what's happening. He got death threats. Like he had something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, like legitimately, this is so I'm going to try to keep some of my language down, but this is so freaking it's idiotic and stupid. I do not know. Like, is there something wrong with these people's brains? Like, like, were, did their parents not raise them with like, any basic human this decency? Would be like, like, if Half Life Three were to be announced and the day before launch they canceled it. <laughs> like, like, like that. Like, even that's not like that doesn't that doesn't give you the right to yeah. threaten somebody's life, especially over a video game. This is a video it's, game, it's a guys. Of inter- it's a source of entertainment. Yeah, like. Like legitimately, like didn't like somebody say like how like well, what was that threat? Because you told me it before the oh, podcast. Uh, the, the guy basically said that he was going to find where he lived and murder him and his entire family. Yeah, and and wasn't there a bit more to that? Oh, do you want me to read it? Read, read the whole thing because <laughs> um, I'm going to go on. So he wrote more than this, but this is all I got in the screenshot pic they sent. It says your little article about No Man's Sky being delayed has made me hate you to my very core. It is the only thing I live for. Stop there for a moment. It is the only thing that this guy apparently lives for. What the actual fuck is wrong with you? Are you such a basement dweller? Just... I'm trying not to offend people, okay? Yeah. But just like... No, like, like, legitimately, this sounds like that stereotypical nerd who lives for nothing but video games. Legitimately, this is the kind of toxic person that I hate to my very core. Because you... Because you were not going to get a video game as soon as you thought you were, you think that it's okay to threaten the life, and not, not even just the life of this reporter, but the life of his family too, over a fucking video game? Are you so, so stupid? 
And is your life just so hollow I'm trying so that you have to nothing better to do with your life than to frighten other people? Like, legitimately, shut the fuck up and go back to your Minecraft. Because oh I do not want to ever hear from this right, person ever again. Right. And, you know what? and I'm not bashing Minecraft. I love Minecraft. Minecraft is great. In fact, I want to play No Man's Sky because it's kind of like Minecraft in space. But legitimately... What is with people? I do not understand this. <sighs> I'm done. This is great. I didn't even read the whole thing. Oh, oh, is there more? There's more. This is no. This should make you laugh more than anything. This is pretty funny. Uh, so he goes on to say, instead of visiting London later this month, London, mind you. I think I'll come by and say hi to you and fuck you up. Oh my god. Hang on, it gets better. You think you can get away with this that easy, he says? <laughs> oh my god. What? What? He's reporting the news. Yeah. <laughs> like, I... Like, would you say this to, like, your Channel 5 newscaster for saying it's gonna rain on your Sunday where you were gonna go fishing? Fuck How you, the weatherman. fuck dare you <laughs> say that it's going to rain tomorrow? I had plans to go fishing. Fishing, guys! What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm gonna kill you and your family and your dog. I'm going to just blow up your house. Like, <laughs> legitimately, like, you would not do that. This is great. Because they have no control over that. They're just telling you about it. So this all and it goes back to the, to the saying, don't shoot the messenger. Yeah. Because it's not their fucking fault. Yeah. I'm going all Alpha Omega Sin over this here because this legitimately pisses me off when I, people I do love this. Your passion right now, see what. <sighs> but uh, this the, the screenshot with that message was sent by Jason. Well, I say that it was is tweeted by Jason Schreer himself, and uh, he comments on it what it's like to write about video games on the internet. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. But yeah, No Man's Sky was delayed. Be patient; see, okay. it'll get here before Kingdom Hearts. 3 I'm sorry to run this segment long, but. Delays are a good thing. Yeah, it allows... Always. Well, for... almost always. Mighty number nine. We're moving on. Um, well, like, no, but delays can be a good thing because, you know, there's bugs and stuff that needs to be 90% of the time, delays you know, are fixed. a good thing. Yeah, like, for example, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, which is 10 years old this year, by the way. Jesus. Feel old yet? That game was rushed as all hell. And there was look a, what happened. There was a little bit more to, to Sonic 06 than that. Yeah, there was a little bit more to it, but that is one of the big things. Was that I it think, was rushed, and it look how bad it turned I out. Th- yeah, I think what I would go to is the Bioshock games. I think almost yeah. all three of them got delayed, at least once. Yeah. Um, um, but they all became amazing games yeah, for Yeah, they are some of the best games of the last generation. Like, yes, it sucks. I understand. It sucks that we're not getting No Man's Sky the day that it was originally promised. Yeah. It sucks that you have to wait two more months. Oh, oh man, boo-hoo. what are you going to do for 60 whole days? I mean, it's not like I've been waiting Ugh. over a decade for Kingdom Hearts 3. Or I Final mean, Fantasy 15. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> like, get the fuck over it and just wait. There's what? plenty of awesome games yeah. out there that I'm sure you haven't gotten you pick to Pick up yet. Overwatch. <laughs> yeah. Like, for as much as I don't care for, you know, online first-person shooters that, you know, that's pretty much all that there is to the game. Yeah. I mean, it it sounds like it's a lot of fun. Pick that really up. You'll probably have a fun time too. with that. But yeah, delays are a good thing. Idiots <laughs> will be idiots. Don't feed the trolls. Yeah. Especially don't feed C with the trolls. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> you probably never heard me rant on that level. Never. <laughs> I usually don't get that, that was, angry about things. That was fun. Um, <sighs> this past week, this past weekend, we actually got to go to Arkansas Anime Festival for the first Woo! time. Yeah, yeah it's. Uh, it was, First time for both of us, right? Arkansas, yeah. Arkansas Anime Festival Spring 2016. Woo! It's a great event. We had a lot of fun. Shot a lot of video, took a lot of pictures. Took a lot of pictures. I think I think the final number was 349 that went up. Yeah. I took like 1,300. <laughs> Dude was like a picture-taking machine. I don't even know how he did it. Um, like it well, actually, I know how he did it because yeah. I was there for most of it, but still, it was amazing. But yeah, we, we had a lot of fun. Um yeah. I want to. I want to start, and I'm going to try to 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 say this in the the right words, because if I say this the wrong way, it could be taken out of context. I was kind of worried at first, because um, from friends I had heard horror stories, um, and it turned out it wasn't the case at all. It was, it was an amazing convention. I hope to let let us come back. Yeah. 
Because, I mean, that hurt, you know, with a, with a con that's been going as long as A2F has, yeah, it is you're, going little... to, you're going to hear some bad sure. stuff happening. That's that's fair. There was an entire panel, and I, and I was in there, um, where they were talking about con horror stories, and there was more than one about past A2Fs. But this one, I thought, was a really good convention. Yeah, it um, was really well run. It was really fun. It seemed like they had, you know, all their stuff together. It ran it ran pretty smooth. Yeah. Which, for conventions, is good. Pretty yeah. smooth is, is like A. Yeah. <laughs> when, when my biggest complaint about the convention is that you don't have the schedule online as a PDF. Yeah. When, when that's my biggest complaint, then you're doing something so, right. Speaking of complaints, I, uh, I recently put up a Google Doc... Um, as my convention review form because I want, wanted to find a form to start doing reviews for conventions and I think I think this podcast is probably the best place for it. Yeah. So we could have just the discussion about what we liked, what we didn't, and we can even talk about what the people that filled out my form said. Mm-hmm. Um. So just to get to it, the first question I asked them was, on a scale of one to five, how was their experience? And I got a lot of feedback. Sixty-one percent of the people said that they really loved the convention, they want to come back. Um, and a majority of the rest of them said that uh, they really liked the convention. They would probably go again. Only so it was a mostly positive response. It's mostly positive response. Um, I got nobody that said they didn't enjoy it at all and they won't be coming back at all. Yeah. Um, I did have a few that said they didn't like it, but they would consider coming again. What do you think? Uh, like just as in general, in like general. My, my thoughts on the convention. Mm-hmm. Well, like like what I said before, it was really well run. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of interesting stuff that happened there. Um, honestly, like the first thing I want to talk about is their game room. Yeah. Um, because game rooms have been hit and miss for me at conventions. Some conventions have absolutely stellar game rooms. Right. It has like just about every game you could ever want to play, and then some just have like the bare essentials. Hardly they anything. They found like every console they could find like the day before the con or something. Legitimately, I went to a convention once, and they had like two consoles oh in their game room, and like. Just a massive room, like, as big as, like, their main stage room. Mm -hmm. And they had, like, a couple tables set up. Yeah. And then at the far end were, like, two consoles. I remember... It was ridiculous. But this convention was was really nice. Um, they had had a large variety of consoles. Um, GameCube, Dreamcast, N64, PS2, PS3, you know. Um, just about every console that you could want to play, they had... Um, and if they didn't have it, they probably had a game similar to what you would have wanted to play on that anyways. Because sure. um, the one thing is that the game they only had like one game per system for the entire weekend. Sure. But a lot of those games were really good, so it was fine. For example, they had Rock Band on like a Xbox yeah. like yeah. all weekend long. But who doesn't like, you know, <laughs> those kinds of... Who doesn't like Rock Band? They had Donkey Konga on a GameCube all weekend long. <laughs> who doesn't like, you know, music rhythm games? They're fun. Um, they they had Super Smash Bros. almost all weekend. Yeah. They also had some arcade games. Right. I got to play Cruisin' World, which I haven't gotten to play that in forever. It's part of the uh, the Cruisin' USA driving series. Yeah. Um, and they also had a pinball game. Um, it was called Fire. It's, it was by Williams. And I have no connection to this specific pinball game, but it just been so long since I'd played pinball that it was a lot of fun to play that. I got you. Um, and then also in that game room, they had a, just these two huge tables just set up with Legos. Legos. There's a whole bunch of, <laughs> like a big mess of Legos. Yeah. And that was really interesting. Um, I didn't get too into messing around that over there, either. but I, I know but I saw some people who were having a lot of fun over there. That's cool. And then... About half the room was devoted to LARP battles. Yeah, um, and I didn't know they had a they had an amped guard group out there. Yeah, and while I wasn't able to you know take part in that, it's still really it's cool. Fun. Yeah, um, so the game room was definitely a big plus there. I, think a, I, have, a, I have a small gripe about the game room yeah. actually. Um, the fact you know me, fighting gamer. Um, their their guy that was doing the rave, DJ Blay, is a good friend of mine. We met yeah. at ACA. Um, I really, really wanted to play some Street Fighter with with Blay, and there wasn't a PS4 for, for her to. But it's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, if you know, then that's just one game yeah, that they didn't and have. It was just one of those things. It's like, but, eh, whatever. But like, they they had Blaze Blue. Yeah, that was about the last I game I would have expected because like it's fairly popular, but not nearly as popular as Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. <laughs> huh? It's an anime fighter though. Yeah. Um, there was almost always somebody playing that as well. What would you say was the highlight of the convention? The highlight of the convention, I'm not sure, because 
one of the big things was I was running around doing so much yeah. like video and like pictures you. with you that like I I there's I missed a lot of stuff. Um, I don't know. Just I think I would say um, we we got the the pleasure of sitting in on the pre judging of the cosplay contest. Yeah, that was really interesting um, getting to see. Got that's a something that I'd never seen before. Entirely new perspective on how it all works yeah it really felt like a job interview man i was scared <laughs> you, for some of them and you weren't even like, i wasn't even there i felt yeah. like i was at a job like i wasn't in the contest they're getting prejudged at all so yeah. it felt like it still felt like a job interview yeah i can understand how you'd be super stressed over that yeah. like if you were a cosplayer um, um but it was really cool the cosplay contest itself was really cool i was surprised by some of the things that won yeah um and man okay can we can we actually just talk about the cosplay contest for a little bit yeah, here yeah, yeah. okay so one of the people who won, um, when I saw him in prejudging, I never would have thought that he was going to win. I think I know who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, um, this this guy was cosplaying some kind of character from Gears of War. He's, um, I think they call him Wasted. Yeah, it's basically part of Gears of War three. I think yeah. it's been so long since I played the Gears of War series. Yeah, but um, um but this guy, he basically he he had like a beanie cap on, um, a little bit of, like that like black paint kind of like what you see like football players put on right and then you know, like a t- yeah yeah war paint and then like t-shirt you know pants backpack and then he had um, a lancer that he bought and i think that comes with like some addition like some special edition of one of the games right um so very you know low key not super complex cosplay but damn it when he got up on stage holy god oh my god okay yeah. so for those who don't know A2F this year took place during Memorial Day weekend. And this guy, his entire thing, his entire bit on stage was basically just a big homage to Fallen Soldiers. Yeah, like a like a tribute to the Fallen. Yeah. And on Memorial Day weekend. On Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> and it, it hit me. And I was yeah. just like, damn. That, you know, and he won. I don't, I don't remember exactly what he won, but he won something. He won, he won the Judges Award. Yeah. And which... It basically means, you know, we couldn't give you, like, first, second, or third place, but we really liked what you did. Yeah. Here's an award. Yeah. But... <laughs> Still cool. Yeah. It was really cool, and that was really great. I, uh... I took a uh, lot of pictures during that, and I actually showed him... His name's Corbin. Um, yeah. I'm not going to give him his last name, because I'm not sure if he'd appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, but his name's Corbin. He's a really, really cool guy. We met at ACA, but I don't remember what he was cosplaying then. Yeah, but he, what he did was amazing, and yeah, I loved it. It was really cool. Um... Other than that, like, was there any cosplay um, that really... You know. Um, well, like I said, we got to sit yeah. on the pre-judging, and the reason we did that was because I'm going to do a video on the cosplay contest and how, like, it all works. Yeah. Like, um, the cosplayer that we... I, I'm I'm answering your question. Will you yeah. give me a second? <laughs> well, I mean, He's like, what does that have to do with anything? Get to um, the point already. Get to the point, Frank. Um, <laughs> the cosplayer that we followed around um, is a good friend of mine, Taylor Celestial Yower or something like that. I don't remember. Taylor. <laughs> but uh, I was trying to figure remember her cosplay name. I'll have it in the links uh, for sure, though. She was uh, unveiling her first created because she made the cosplay entirely herself. Yeah. And it's a beautiful um, costume. She cosplayed Lucina from Fire Emblem Awakening. Yeah. It's awesome. I Lucino, but I thought she was from Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> I, thought she, I thought that was Marth. <laughs> Legitimately, the first time I played Fire Emblem Awakening, I was like, fucking Marth, hell yeah, let's do this. And then... Wait, that's a girl. <laughs> okay, I'm still okay with it. Whatever. Uh, that reminds me of a comic I saw where Marv sees Lucina and he's like, oh my god, that's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. And he walks up to go talk to her and she says, and she says, and she's like, oh my god, great, 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 great grandfather. And I'm like, and he's just like, hor- has this horrified expression on his face like, no. That's great. But no, like her cosplay was awesome. Yeah, so I really liked like her Lucina. It, it it kicked a lot of butt, and it was really cool. Uh, the the girl that won, um, Reagan, I think is her name. Um, I remember she cosplayed somebody from LOL, but I don't play LOL. So oh, the person with like the giant the hand. giant okay, hands that yeah. worked. Yeah, she had these giant so hands, cool. and like they they could actually move, and it was really cool. Um, um, I fist bumped her. So. You just, that's great. <laughs> I should have gotten a picture of that. That would uh, been awesome. But that was that was a really cool one. There's like, a lot of really cool cosplay. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot of like really cool like different things that happened. 
Obama Juan Kenobi. <laughs> the Jedi Master Obama with yeah. his SWAT team. <laughs> um, oh gosh. Yeah, like SWAT, SWAT stood for something. What was it? I don't know. I don't remember um, for the life of me. Yeah, but like, yeah. It was this dude and he, he was dressed up as Obama. He had like a blue suit. Um, he had a cape that was an American flag. He had like one of those like Halloween like rubber Obama masks on. <laughs> that's like smiling. It's really creepy looking. And lightsabers. <laughs> yeah, and like this cloak on. And he had lightsabers. Um, while they were try- um, so like the the judges had to go and you know decide who was gonna win. Right. Um, at the cosplay contest. Oh. And between you know the last person and when they came out with their decision, one of the things that they had to entertain people was a lightsaber fight. Between him and between Kylo him Ren. and Kylo Ren, and it really was funny. great. I loved it. Was it was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he ended up winning the Trevor Award, which is yeah. a special award they give. Oh my god! I was on the verge of tears when that happened because, yeah. um, for those who don't know, Trevor was a person who went to A two F, and you know a lot of people in the community really were, were friends of him, and he unfortunately passed away. So they. Um, Develop this award. So they, they honor him by giving out the yeah. Trevor Award. And yeah. That basically make A2S yeah, special. And, and one of the judges was tearing up at it. And it was just really emotional. And to see... And to see such a silly cosplay, though, win that... <laughs> like, it, like, it was really interesting hearing what the guy had to say after yeah. he won it. Because, you know, just, like, I don't know. Like, because like, the awards, you know, meant to go to someone who, you know, goes above and beyond. And, you know, really... You know, takes the takes the cosplay and makes it their own, and right. you know, puts all this personality into it. And I don't know, it was just it was really interesting. Yeah, I got you. Um, so we should we should probably talk about the uh, the cosplay judges real quick. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Just one shout. more cosplay. One more. One more time cosplay. Oh, one more time cosplay, um, which is a pun, and our, I love our, it. <laughs> our friend William Moore, he's he's a good guy. Dude is super cool. He is really cool. Um. By the way, hashtag he actually, make William Dab 2K16. Make William Dab 2K16. <laughs> that'll be the that'll be the thumbnails, a picture of us dabbing. There you go. Dab. No, not really, but um, Dabrielle. Dab. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, uh, um, there's a Toriel cosplayer that we know. Inside and, jokes. Yeah, and she she did a lot of dabbing over the yeah. A2F weekend. A2F, <laughs> the AKA Year of the Dab. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, Will's a good friend of mine. He actually won um, ACA's cosplay contest with his, I call, friend, um, his friend Joseph. <laughs> I yeah. don't remember And his they were doing name. an Undertale cosplay. Yeah, William were, was uh, Sans and the other guy Sans was... Uh, King Asgore. Yeah. Oh, that Asgore. That Asgore was so cool because, you know, all the prosthetics and stuff, you know, like, no seams at all. Like, yeah. it was perfect. But the Sans cosplay was really cool, yeah. too. Now, I haven't played Undertale still, but I man... Know. Shame that, him. Shame. Don't, don't shame me. Cause shame. I want to play it. I just need to, you know, catch it when it's on sale. Um, it's $10. <laughs> man, my gaming budget is so tight right Jesus now. Jesus Christ, I might buy it for you because you're broke. <laughs> Jesus God. Um, but, Waiting for it to go on sale. I thought I was cheap. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it seems summer sale is coming up. That's so. true. Um, it probably will go on sale. <laughs> so, if I, so if I can get it for cheaper, I, I hope will. The, uh, the soundtrack goes on sale then. I'll yeah, but... um. Then. But his sans is really cool, yeah. and um, it's awesome. So, woo. yeah, they love the characters too, which is fun. <clears throat> um, going on, um, average Asian cosplayer or cosplay was there. He's really cool. Yeah. Um, he did a Korra <clears throat> cosplay. Uh, yeah, he was Mako he was from Mako Korra on on Sunday. Um, yeah, Sunday. Which I loved his Mako cosplay. It's great. Mm. Um, he. he <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having to stop myself from fanboying over Korra right now. Um, he also did. I can't remember for the life of me. What else. Yeah, it's okay. I, like, it's I been, saw it and I was like, "That's really cool," but I, I don't know it, what it's from. I want to <laughs> say it's been so long. It's been three days. <laughs> well, you've had a pretty busy time, That's though. True, man. Um, I can't. I'm blanking hard. Uh, what was the other cosplayer? Um, was a judge. She is the the leader of uh, Dripping with Good Looks cosplay, which is a group cosplay of uh, Oron High School Host Club. <laughs> and you love Oron. I do love Oron. We actually we actually got to sit down with the entire cosplay group, and me and them gushed for like twenty minutes about our favorite thing about mm. Oron. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there behind the camera, just like, why do they like this? <laughs> I it's they, a good show. That's why I, I legitimately asked um, when he ran out of like stuff to talk about. I was like. 
why should I watch it or on high school host club? And they, and he, and he said, yeah, see what's never seen it. And they all just gave me <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that they, death stare, they gave you the death that, stare. that stink eye. I'm just like, I'm just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Germany is a good looks cosplay. Was a, they're a lot of fun to, to chat with and interact. Yeah. Um, I took a lot of pictures of them. They did a lot of events for the con too. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, they did it like a tea party and like a, a ball. They did a tea party on Friday, and they did a formal ball on Sunday. And yeah. That was interesting to say the least. <laughs> um, as for like the cosplayers, I'm getting everything from um, the rave, uh, getting to dress up in cosplay is like the highlight for them. Yeah. Um, LARPing. How about the guests? Um, surprisingly, I don't think any any of them really said the guests, but the guests were amazing. Um, Austin Tyndall and Rachel Messer were really, really cool. Mm-hmm. I only got to sit down with Rachel for like three minutes. And by sit down, I mean I caught her in the vendor room and went, hey, you're Rachel Messer. And she She's went, like, yes, I am. And I went, hey, <laughs> we should talk sometime. And she went, here's my card. <laughs> that was yeah, like I was, 90% of the conversation. Yeah, I was so busy doing stuff that I wasn't, I never even saw her. Um, yeah. But Austin Tyndall was really cool. Austin Tyndall's a really cool guy. He did like six Q&A panels that weekend. Yeah. And they were almost all packed. It was ridiculous. People people love Austin Tyndall. Uh, <laughs> um, by the way, that's the first whack interviews filmed before a live studio audience. That's true. Or rather a live hotel room audience. Because yeah. <laughs> <it was, laughs> we did it in the panel room right after his last panel and right before he was going to leave. So there were still people in the panel room. They just sat down and like watched it. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it was cool. They actually, didn't they ask him if they could stay? I don't remember, but... Um, That's what I was told. <laughs> it doesn't really... It doesn't, I was in the other room getting getting something, or yeah. giving something back. Yeah, like, he finished, like, signing stuff, and then he was like, what, where's that guy who wanted to inter- interview me? And I'd, like, go talk to him, like, he'll be right back, I swear. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's funny. But, yeah, um, Austin Tyndall was really cool. Like, after he, the interview, he just he literally ran up to everybody <laughs> in the room and gave them hugs. It was really he weird, but he really ran awesome. everybody and just hugged them. <laughs> that, yeah. It's pretty funny. <laughs> that was probably the most surprising moment of the con for me. Well, actually, no, that's like the second most surprising moment of the con for me. But yeah, gotcha. first um, one was seeing somebody who I haven't seen in two years. Who's oh right, in the yeah. vendor room, yeah. Um, so if you could change anything about the con, what would it be? Could I, if I could change anything? It'd change anything. Um, I want Gaijin Goomba to be there for more than like five seconds. Okay. Um, <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, Gaijin Goomba was there for the Smash Brothers tournament. He was like hosting it. Yeah. Um. And I think that's all he did. <laughs> yes, yeah, literally, he shows up, goes into the vendor room, and then goes to do the Smash Bros. tournament. Pretty much, he was a guest at um at Consplosion a few years yeah. ago when I got to interview him. And, and he's he's a super cool he's dude. A I've lot met, of fun to talk yeah. to. I've met him before. He's super cool. I just wish that you know he would have been more like a proper guest yeah. rather than just right. someone who hosted like one tournament. Right. Because he's a super cool dude. I would have loved to sit down and like panels he, with him. He doesn't live very far away. Yeah. The only issue is, like, he might be super busy, but I'm, right. that's understandable. I got you. Um, I think for me, uh, the only thing I would change, I don't know how I would change it. Um, the layout of the con is a little wonky to me. I feel like that's partially just because of... Um, the location, yeah, more or which less. Which, there aren't a whole lot of other places they could do it in this area. Right. Like, there's a place, like, in Rogers I can that I think of that they might be able to do it at, but... That's about it. I got you. Um, um, but yeah, just the layout of the con was a little off to me. Just because there were two buildings. Well, yeah. Right? Well, it's not only that. It's like, you know, the way some other cons that are at that hotel do it mm-hmm. is a little different. And like, they have like the main events in the main building. Yeah. Where they didn't. Um, it was just weird. Yeah, um, but that, but having main events where they did, did allow them to have a much bigger vendor room like for comparing it to like glitchcon okay right. glitchcon's vendor room is not was not nearly as big as this one sure at a2f and it's really cramped in there that's true I like there's a there's more than enough room to walk around in the vendor room which i greatly appreciated because um i've been to multiple cons actually not just glitchcon where the um but other cons as well where the vendor room has a lot of cool stuff but it's really cramped, and you can barely move in there. Right. So it's really nice to have a very spacious vendor room. Right. Um, and Artist Alley was really nice. Um, I thought yeah. the panel rooms were set up fairly well. Right. It's just that having main events and the game room in a completely separate building, Shoot you know, it's a little... From a... Yeah. Um, one person mentioned a, a time limit for the cosplay contest. That's something I kind of want to mention. Um, some of the, the, like, the cosplay skits went 
like far too long. Yeah, in my opinion. Um, like people who are seeing like full length songs, and it's like I don't want to take anything away from them. Yeah. Some of them were still really cool. Yeah. Um, some of them I don't really understand because I didn't watch the anime they were from, nor do I like really get into the like the pop culture that they were doing. Yeah. Um. But it's like I kind of agree that you keep a, a pretty good schedule on it. Yeah. And things run a little bit smoother. Maybe like um, two minutes max. I think it might be good. I don't run cons for a reason. I don't so know. <laughs> I, that's just an idea. I'm no, I understand. No, but I understand what what you're on um, what what that person's talking about. Yeah. yeah, I was sitting. I, well, I wasn't sitting, but I was there taking pictures, and I was just thinking to myself, like, when is this going to be over? Go on to the next thing. My battery is so low, it's going to die, and it did. My battery died during the cosplay contest, and I was disappointed. Somebody said the weather. <laughs> What? <laughs> the weather was the weather wasn't that bad actually. So like funny. it was supposed to rain one day yeah. and it didn't. Um, it got kind of hot. Um, yeah. Later on in the days, but that's just kind of how Arkansas weather is during this time of the year. It's gonna get hot. Yeah. Um, I thought it was nice though. Like if I had been wearing shorts, it would have been perfect. If you uh, if you got your choice, who would you like to see next year? Uh, Markiplier Ga- Rage of F twenty seventeen. No, than, no. Other than Gaijin Gooba. <laughs> Um, other than Gaijin Yuba, honestly, and I'm just going to say this because I want to meet this person at some point. I honestly really want Chris Niosi, okay. um, who's Kerber Fur, and they probably won't be able to get him because he, I don't know. I just, it feels like he doesn't do a whole lot of cons, but that, um, he's a voice actor in a lot of anime. He's been in, like, Pokemon and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, he created the YouTube series Tome, which is really good, and every podcast I talk about Kerber, um, Kerblogs, which is, um, his kind of blog podcast thing that he does right. um i'm a huge fan would love to see him at just really any con right um other than that uh i mean i want to see todd habercorn at some point um i, I don't remember we were just talking about the guy that plays alphonse <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> yeah the guy who plays alphonse um, aaron i want to meet him <laughs> yeah um which you know and, like the, i i can go on and on about the, like different voice actors and stuff um right. But honestly, like, Chris Neosi Kerberfer would be my first choice. I got you. Um, so, going to our, the, the con people that, that answered my questionnaire, uh, everything from YouTubers to um, people that do con stuff around the area. Samurai Dan was mentioned. The Flaming Death Fairies were mentioned. The Flaming Death Fairies are awesome. Really Dude, cool. it'd be so cool for them to have a concert at A2F. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, they're a band from the Little Rock area. And they, um, they're very talented. Yeah, they're very talented, and they play at every um, anime con in Arkansas and Little Rock, and they are amazing. Check them out on SoundCloud. Um, also, I think they have an album. It might be on iTunes. I don't know. It is on Spotify for sure. Okay. Um, because I have it downloaded. Yeah, so go check that out definitely, because uh, it's nerd music and it's awesome and it's great, except for their song that it's about a potato. I will never understand that. Somebody wants the main actor from The Flash. <laughs> I, Grant Gustin, I think is his name. Dude, if they... So, for those who don't know, um, A2F is sponsored by the Arkansas CW. Um, they do a lot of stuff. They actually had like a stand... They actually had like a cardboard um, standee for The Flash from the TV show. Um, it'd be so cool if they could do that. I, I don't see it happening, but it'd be really awesome. Yeah. Because there are definitely a lot of people who go there who like that kind of stuff. I got you. Maybe GlitchCon, though, I feel would probably be more appropriate for him. I don't know. But I don't run conventions. Uh, Hulu and Netflix have just recently removed over 150 anime titles now, from their library. To be more clear on it, that's mostly Hulu. Yeah, mostly. Um, you, um, Netflix removed, I believe, about four shows, actually. Yeah. Um, I don't remember they what... They didn't have much to begin with. Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... But they're starting to run out. Who knows? They might remove Dura Ra 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 Which means you'll never watch it. I'll never see it. And I will have one. I have the list loaded up right here. A lot of it is like stuff I've either never heard of. I never found on Hulu to begin with. Or stuff that had like maybe an episode or two that are that are dubbed. Not much that's sub. The big ones I do want to mention real quick. They got rid of Excel Saga. Which is one of my favorite animes. Um, Eureka or Eureka 7, however you're supposed to say it. Um, um, Speed Grapher was in that list. I'm going through it. I'm going through it. Um, while he's looking at more, uh, 
if my source is correct, Netflix removed Samurai Champloo, Champloo. Oh my god, they got rid of Champloo? Yeah, which I'm super oh. disappointed by because I really wanted to watch that. Oh, um, that's they, so good. They also got rid of um, Eureka 7. <laughs> yeah, uh, they got rid of the Animatrix, which, whatever, oh, yeah. it's Matrix. Oh, um, and then Icky Tucson, which I have no idea what that is. I've heard of it. I haven't seen it though. Um, yeah. Hulu also got rid of Princess Jellyfish, which that was one of the shows that only had like two episodes. Yeah. Period. Like but subbed it, or dubbed. Which I mean, it sucks that more that less people will be able to see it. Yeah. But I mean, when you only have like two episodes, Slayer's Revolution. I don't even know what that is. Old school. That's what that is. Oh, uh, okay. Old school. <laughs> We're talking like early '90s anime. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, it sucks. It, it's it's not a good thing. Yeah, but I'm not surprised. A lot of shows, not just anime, have been going off of streaming services right. lately. <clears throat> like if you compare Netflix to a year ago, there are less shows now. There's a lot less shows. Yeah. And Fucking you... Cash Our Sins, I want it back. I want it back <laughs> right now. I only saw the first episode and I liked it, and I didn't get to see the rest. And you removed it, and I. It, it, it's an okay show. Um, is that the show I'm thinking of? Cash That's Rinsen? not the show I'm thinking oh. of. I mean, it is a show, though. Yeah. What is um, the show? I, I don't remember the name of the show I'm thinking of. I'll probably put it in the comments yeah. later. But <laughs> but um, a lot. I've noticed that a lot of shows are leaving streaming services. And I think that's partially... Think it's Crunchyroll's fault? <laughs> uh, I don't think it's Crunchyroll's fault necessarily, but I think it is just the nature of streaming services. Because if you've noticed, a lot of um, companies are starting up new streaming services. Right. Um, a big one is CBS. CBS is starting up their all access. Mm-hmm. Um, which one of the flagship shows that's going to be on that is a new Star Trek. Um, HBO has HBO Go now. Yeah. So where Game of Thrones used to be on Netflix, it's all going to HBO Go now. Was it on Netflix really? Yeah, it was. Yeah, Game of Thrones like it didn't air on Netflix, but like it eventually would be put on so, Netflix. That's interesting, actually, because now I have a, I have a theory. <laughs> I feel like it's going to go the way of like classic video games did back in '83. Have you heard about the, the, the... Where there were like a billion different consoles? Yeah, yeah. exactly. There were like eight consoles and everybody and their grandma was making shit for them. And so yeah. Well, it's like, going to end up overflowing the market. Well, like here's the thing. Okay, so you got the big three. You got Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime. Right. Each of them have their own shows that they make and each of them have sure. other people's shows. I put Crunchyroll like a, like well, a fourth. Well, and then you also... Yeah, well, that's that one's just anime though. Right. Um, But yeah, then you have Crunchyroll. Then you have Yahoo who's trying to do their own thing. Yeah. Yahoo's still a thing. Yahoo <laughs> has their own video service and they're trying to do stuff with it, but it's not working out. You have YouTube Red though, and then you've got CBS All Access. You've YouTube got Red's HBO Go. A... You've got a, just a billion different services. Yeah. Um, and then you've also got like on-demand services on cable. It's just and... like. Who has all this money? <laughs> it, it, it's just ridiculous. Nobody and it, has all and this it's money. And it's getting, and all these shows are getting taken off and put in other places. Funimation has their own streaming service, which yeah. I think used to go for Hulu, but doesn't anymore. Um, so a lot of, a lot of Funimation shows are still on Hulu, though. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that there's a lot of different streaming services, and it's hard to keep up with all of them. Yeah. And eventually um, they will all die out, except for Crackle. Because no matter what, we Crackle. can't seem to get rid of Crackle. <laughs> I, don't, I don't necessarily agree that all of them will die out. No, no, no. I, I, I just said that to make a joke oh, okay. about okay. Crackle. I, I do think that, that it'll it'll end up going the way of like the video game crash of 83. Where we'll be like, you know what, F this shit. Who needs videos? Like, something will come along. And we're like, like just like the video game crash of 83 happened when computers became a big thing. And we just moved on to the next thing until yeah. the savior of the universe, Nintendo, comes in yeah. <laughs> and shows us how it's done. Nintendo's supposed to be making movies and TV shows. Maybe they could make a streaming service. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean Nintendo for the streaming services. No, I'm That's just what ma- happened back in 83. I'm just making a horrible joke. I oh. got you. So, yeah. Um, things. <laughs> uh. So there, there are speculated rumors going around on the interwebs about Ooh. a um, Injustice Gods Among Us. Well, it's just Injustice Two, yeah. um, a sequel to Injustice Gods Among Us that came out yeah. five years ago now. I don't think it was was it five four or five years ago somewhere around there. Mm. It might be on here. Hold on. I'm thinking closer to three or four for the base game. I I think I got like the gold edition like two 2012. Years. Oh. Four years ago. Okay, yeah, four years ago. Um, 
Did you play Injustice? I did. What, um, that what? was back when I was really big into fighting games, and I, got, I played everyone that came out. And I really liked it at first, and then the meta got developed in like a month, and it's not a great fighting game. Hmm. Um, what I think was really cool about it, um, as far as like you know the meta game and stuff, was that in game they actually told you like how long each move took to do, yeah, and like um, the exact like frames. And that stuff. was that was one of the cool things. Is I think Injustice was the first game to give you all of the frame data. Yeah, we didn't have to wait for somebody to go through painstaking hours of framing every little thing and going, okay, this is four frames. This is this frames. Um, I will give NetherRealm Studio mad props for that because yeah. they also did it in um, MKX. Ah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, also, it was the first good DC fighting game. Yeah, Shots fired at anyone who at like the two people who like MK versus DC more. Um, Nobody likes the game scene. What? <laughs> there are people who defend Sonic 06, so I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> at this point, it would not surprise me. Um, um, but no, well. like I really liked Injustice. I thought it was great. I actually played it um, the majority on the PlayStation Vita. It was it had a surprisingly really good port on the PlayStation Vita. Now you can't find anyone to play against online, but yeah. I mean that's because nobody else has a Vita. Um, <laughs> but that's he would bought the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was like one of like two people who bought a Vita, and the other person only plays um, Gravity Rush. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, like it was a really good port, and it was a lot of fun to play actually on the Vita. Obviously, the graphics aren't as good, but it's you know something that's going to happen with putting it on a handheld. Yeah. Um, but I played hours upon hours upon hours. Yeah. I got so good at that game. I entered the um, I entered the tournament at the last GlitchCon that I went to. Yeah. Um, I think it was the last one. No, no, no. There was the one before last. Like it was 2014 GlitchCon actually, I think, where I entered the tournament and um, I didn't win, but I did really well. I got you. Um, so it's a good port. If you have a Vita, check it out. It's coming to like the competitiveness of Injustice. One, um, what is it? The first month was interesting because everybody's still learning the game, yeah. trying to figure out what they could do with it. And then, um, when basically when we figured out that that fireball moves beat everything, <laughs> um, more particularly Superman's ice breath and laser beams are ridiculous. Oh my god, they are the worst. Why did you make a special move safe on block? Uh. <laughs> you made a move virtually unpunishable, and you gave them access to use it whenever they blocked moves. I remember at the GlitchCon tournament. <laughs> I remember at the GlitchCon tournament, they banned Green Lantern. Lantern? Yeah, because he had some moves that were actually pretty spammable. Well, yeah, but he's not, like, broken. And he's pretty easy to beat. All of his stuff's punishable. Still, though, for the average player, though, yeah. it's kind of hard. Um, well, Superman's broken as shit in that game. <laughs> who's your favorite character to play as, though? Um, I will really, really, really enjoy Green Arrow. Really? <laughs> um, I like, I like technical player, like... I either like really technical characters or I like the big buff characters. So I also like playing Grundy, but Grundy was bad. Yeah. So I played <laughs> Green was. Arrow. Nobody played Grundy. Um, there was some actually really good Grundy players in the competitive scene. Nobody I knew played him. Um, I, I knew one guy was, who loved playing as Lex and was pretty good as Lex. If, uh, if Grundy could get going, he could beat Superman hmm. in that game. But, you know, it's... it's... You're probably going to tell me this was a trash character, but I loved playing as Nightwing. I mean, it was okay. It yeah. was mid-low, but he wasn't garbage. Yeah, I, I like playing as him. And, like, something that was kind of cool about Injustice was that um, each character had their own special, um, yeah. like, ability. And that was activated with the circle button um, on PlayStation, at least. Yeah. And was re- and with Nightwing, what it was, and um, I think the only other character it was like this with was Wonder Woman, was when you press circle, it actually switched the weapon he was using. Yeah, it, it like, so, changed stances for yeah. people that play fighting games. So... Basically, he went from using, like, his dual, like, kind of nightstick thing to this, to using a staff. Yeah. Um, and that was really fun, um, really interesting, because that, that, that changed his fighting style um, a lot. The staff um, was balls, though. Huh? The staff was balls. It wasn't as good, I think, but it was... Nowhere near as good. It had, it had its uses, though. Um, <laughs> but then um, Wonder Woman could do that as well, and she, sw- and she sw- um, swapped between... Using a sword and using her lasso. Yeah. And it was interesting. Um, um, I really, really liked Green Arrow because he had 
like ridiculous combos. If anybody remembers Chris G playing Green Arrow and getting like fifty four percent combos off of one Ice Arrow. Yeah, the cool Jesus. thing. Yeah, yeah, because the cool thing about Green Arrow was his ability was he could shoot an arrow, but then he could also switch between a few different kinds of arrows. Yeah. Um, which, if you were playing as someone who actually knew how to do that, it sucked. Um. <laughs> I think Green Arrow was another character that could that he could fight Superman, kind of, not mm-hmm. really. Um, it's the air beam. I bet you anything that's what it was. If Superman didn't have an air beam, it would be decent. Because Arrow could keep up with him. But yeah. because Superman could jump over all my shit and then throw a fireball at me, I'm done. <laughs> did you play as any of the DLC characters? Uh, I did a little bit, yeah. Um, I didn't really like Zod. I didn't. Re- Lobo was garbage. Uh, yeah, Lobo was garbage. I was I I was disappointed with Lobo. I was kind of upset that they added Scorpion. I mean, like, why? I, I like playing as Scorpion in the game, but yeah, it is a little weird. Why? There's so many other characters you could. Yeah. Where is Booster Gold? <laughs> hey Ed Boon, I'm gonna get on my soapbox now. Hey Ed Boon. <laughs> I swear to God, if you make Injustice Two and Booster Gold is not in the goddamn game, I will be pissed. I will come. I will. Yeah. I will get to my trip to London. I will come to your house, <laughs> kill you, kill your family, kill your dog, kill your cat. Mow take, your take, yard. Take your bodies. Cook it into chili and feed it to your relatives. No, but seriously, Booster uh, Gold, man. <laughs> That's all I want. That's all I want in this world is Booster Gold, and you gave me Scorpion. <laughs> You should see the look on his face. It's hilarious. So, so mad. <laughs> nah, but um, and that, that's the interesting thing about Injustice Two, um, is that there are a lot of characters in the DC universe who we haven't seen yet. So it'd be interesting to see. Maybe we can get Booster Gold. Maybe, Maybe we can get Captain Cold. Maybe. Please, I thought you were gonna try to rhyme that again. I was like, "Oh God, here we go." <laughs> I'm not gonna. I can't come up with a third one that rhymes. But um, <laughs> nah. But there's a lot of characters in the DC universe that we could see. Um, who other than Booster Gold would you want added? Um, I'm trying to. Th- I don't know DC very very well. Mm. Uh, I'd like to like Bizarro would be cool. <laughs> Bizarro. You know, what would be really cool if like the main villain was like composite Superman. Oh, from like the 1920s where it was like half Batman, half Superman. That would be weird, but I'd be totally up for it. Um, what's the monkey's name? Not Gorilla Grodd. There was like a detective monkey. Detective Chimp. Detective Chimp. <laughs> that would be cool. That'd be funny. To I would play the shit out of Detective <laughs> Chimp. I don't even care if he's an ass character. I, I'd imagine he'd be sort of like the equivalent to um Surfbot in NBC too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, that reminds me of um I did a documentary on comic books uh this is years ago and in our credits we um had like the different comic book characters with like um talk bubbles like in that and that had the credits in it so like um uh, we so one of them was um Detective Chimp and we had a production assistant where um we had his name with Detective Chimp nice. Just because we were making jokes about, about him. Scarecrow? Yeah. Scarecrow would be really cool to see what they would do with him. I, I feel like I feel like he might play a little bit like Freddy Krueger from MK9, yeah. but still, I feel like they could do a lot of interesting stuff with him. His At least his ultimate move would be really cool to see. Yeah. I don't know. There's just... There's a lot of possibility. But fucking Beast Boy. Beast Boy Beast would be Boy awesome. Would be awesome. No. Blue... Beetle. Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle. I want that in the game. <laughs> Dude, it's like Alien Iron Man, basically. Yeah. Um, well, the suit's Alien. But, um, dude, Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle, that would be kick-ass. I would I would buy it just for that. <laughs> give, give me Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle, give me Booster Gold, and I will be happy. Hey, Ed Boon, those two <laughs> characters, you got two copies of the game already. What's yeah. up? <laughs> <laughs> no, Booster Gold would be great. Like His like special ability could be like Having skeets come in and like shoot lasers or some shit like that. I don't know. Because like his special would like should be something along the lines of getting. I'm talking about like his ability though. His yeah, yeah, no, yeah, like his special ability getting. And, like using like items that he stole from the future. That'd be cool too. Like he gets like uh, armor, or it, it would have to be random. Yeah. That would be the best part. <laughs> Make him like um like oh, I can't remember her name Trinity from Blaze Blue, where like she gets like different items all the goddamn time. 
<laughs> Platinum wow. the Trinity from Blaze Blue. I wanted to be just like that, <laughs> where like one's like he gets armor, one's like he gets a speed boost, the other he can like fly or some shit. That'd be so cool. Fucking give me all the random shit. I will play Booster Gold and fuck everyone's day. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, and I'm I'm excited because you know, and E three is right around the corner, so you yeah. know this is it's it's projected to be announced yeah. at E three. Yeah, so I would not be surprised if this is true because it seems about the time for that for yeah. um the next injustice because I, I mean MKX came out two been, years ago at this point, two right? Years? I don't know. A year or two ago? It's been... Um, let, me, let me look it up. Yeah. But it, it feels like it's about the right time for a new fighting game from Never Realm. And Injustice was fun. I won't, I don't see any reason for it not to get um, a new release. Although I'm it's been won- a little over a year. Yeah. I'm wondering where they would go with the story, though. Yeah. Because, like, I didn't hate the story in Justice and then Justice. I liked it. I felt it was way too short, but yeah. it was good. Um... So I, I don't really know where they would go from this. I think Although the, it, the Joker shouldn't be in it. Oh well, yeah, the Joker. Just as two. He really doesn't need to be in it because he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's dead in one of the universes. Um, Whatever. Well, <laughs> but, fucking what, DC, fucking everything up. I mean, there, there are there is potential for more story though because DC actually did come out with a comic book for Injustice that ran for a good yeah I remember portion that. of time. It may still be running actually. I'm not sure, but there's definitely more that they can do with it. And I'm ex- and I'm interested to see what happens. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. So, Nintendo, everybody. Um, so most people who are privy to gaming news probably have heard about the NX. Yeah. Um, it's Nintendo's next console. Kind uh, question, of mark. <laughs> question mark. Question <laughs> mark. Basically, all we know about it is it's coming out next year, and it's going to have the new Zelda on it. Didn't they also say that they weren't going to talk about it at E3? Yeah, apparently, all they're showing at E3 is the new Zelda game on Wii U. They're not even going to show the NX version. They're not going to talk about it next. They're not going to do anything like that. Which Speaking they... of uh, streaming players, <laughs> it's kind of a rumor going around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. Um, Nintendo actually had... Um, they actually released the floor plans for E3... Um, like today or yesterday. Oh, did they? Yeah. And Nintendo has more space at E3 than Sony does. What? <laughs> they have nearly double what Sony does. That's awesome. So, I'm just thinking to myself, like, that's a lot of showing off Zelda. <laughs> like, I'm still oh, surprised. Oh, they've got something. It's fucking Nintendo I feel we're like, talking about. Yeah, I feel like they're they lying to us. They never play their full hand. I feel like they're lying to us and that they're going to be showing off something else. Um... Could it be the MH? It could. Maybe it could be the MH. So according to um, a business analyst report or some by some Japanese company, I can't remember the name of it. Um, mm. Apparently, Nintendo is uh, is making a new handheld codenamed MH. Quote unquote. Apparently, however, this and I've heard a few conflicting reports on this. So some sources say that it's just rumored, and some people say that it's. A projection of what they might do i'm not sure but doesn't it feel like about the time that they make a new handheld uh because we, really well, well think about it like as i mean think about how long they usually keep a handheld around for it feels like it's about that time well you have almost. to keep in mind that they just made the new 3ds a yeah. year ago but i mean i feel like the 3ds almost though is on life support because uh, almost like because Here's the thing, like, yeah, it's a great handheld. I love it, but there haven't been that many games coming out for it. Like, we got, like, this year, what are we getting? All the RPGs came out this year. Yeah, RPGs, but, like, what I'm saying is, like, we haven't had a new Mario in a while. Um, The last Zelda we had was Triforce Heroes. Let's be honest, that just seems like... Triforce Heroes was a good idea implemented the wrong way, just like Force Awakens was. It just seems like a fairly, like, low-key kind of thing. Yeah. And then we got, um, we're getting the new Kirby... Um, yeah. Which Kirby. Mecha no, Kirby. Yeah, but Kirby, um, that series usually comes out towards the end of a console's lifespan. Um, Are you saying cases. Kirby is the console killer? Kirby is the. <laughs> well, think about it. Dreamland 3 was like the last Nintendo game yeah. on Super Nintendo. Um, Return to Dreamland was like the last one on the Wii. Uh, Rainbow Curse didn't kill the Wii U. It didn't, but. I mean, the Wii U was basically dead on arrival. Oh, oh snap. I'm God. kidding. I'm kidding. I love my Wii U. Jesus. <laughs> I'm okay. Careful. I don't know what I don't know what happened, but... I tripped over my phone oh. cord. 
<laughs> but what I'm saying is that it feels almost like, you know, it, this feels like something that is incredibly plausible. Like, I love my 3DS, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is actually true. And that... Sure, I'm not saying it's not plausible. Yeah. I'm What I think, like, if I were Nintendo, I would be making a lot more games for the new 3DS exclusively. Yeah. Um, like Which, they did Xenoblade. Yeah, like... The, like you, you could bring back, like... Any good Wii game. You could yeah. put both the Mario Galaxies on the 3DS. Oh my god, you could put Mario Galaxy on the 3DS. I want it. <laughs> I want it, I want it, I want it! Um. <laughs> I just thought about that. You could put Punch-Out on the fucking 3DS. Dude, For I For the re- love of god, Nintendo, shut up and take my money. <laughs> just, just do these things. Just, just... Do it! <laughs> oh, make another good Metroid. Come on. <laughs> but but we're getting a new Shut Metroid. up. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm gonna give Federation bullshit game the, the benefit of the doubt, and I'll probably buy it because it's Metroid. I'm ready to be disappointed though. Honestly though, um well what what I'm interested in, okay, so the codename for this one is MH. Codename for their other console is NX. And there's a theory going around that they were making a console that was a Con- that they were making something that was a con- home console handheld hybrid. Do you think maybe that might kind of be what this is with NX and MH? Maybe could be because I don't know. Those names seem very similar. Well, they're two letters. <laughs> yeah, well, they're two letters and then M and N. So, but H and X are nowhere near each other. Uh, <laughs> I remember I was listening to on um, the Nintendo Voice Chat podcast, and they got to the topic of um the MH handheld, and one person was like. Um, and they were trying to figure out like what that stood for. And one person just said, "My handheld." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, so 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 maybe we're getting a new handheld from Nintendo. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll have to wait till E3 to find out. For like, sure. like, what kind of games would I want for it? Other than Phoenix Wright. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, I love Phoenix Wright. I want a new F Zero. F- yeah. I would prefer an F Zero on the damn Wii U. It's perfect for the console. Yeah, but Nintendo is all like, "Oh, well, we want to, you know, do something new and innovative with it." I would if be okay with that too. If we don't, then you know, why do we even make it? I don't know. Why the fuck do you keep making a billion different Mario games? Like, legitimately, like <laughs> they, dude. I bought 3D I'm not World. Sure, where and... your anger's at there, but go on. <laughs> well, no, like I bought 3D World, and you know what? It's a fun enough game. But it feels a little derivative. It feels like a retread of 3D Land. Honestly, like... But we haven't gotten a new F-Zero in... Since the GameCube. Let's say, is GX the last one that came GX out? GX was the last um, console one. Okay, I, I, think there, I think there's been a... I think there was a Game Boy Advance one yeah, after it. Which wasn't but, nearly as good. Yeah, but the last console F-Zero we got was GX. Honestly, it's about time it came back. I mean... We got a new Star Fox, and you can say whatever you want about that, and whether or not it's good. Um, but I feel like if you just gave us, you know, F Zero, and it plays how it did on the GameCube and Nintendo Sixty Four, I think people would be happy with it. I yeah. think that you know it would sell like hotcakes. You know, if you market it properly. Right. I think what would be really cool is if they did, if they like made a new IP racing game and add Captain Falcon to it, because really. Who other than Captain Falcon do we really like in F Zero? I like James McCloud. Oh my! God. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> He's just a reference to Star Fox. Stop talking! <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I mean, seriously, all you would have to do is just make nods to F Zero. It could be even like placed even further in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I mean, honestly though, like yeah, that could work. I don't know. I would like to see a new IP, not necessarily a, wa- a racing game, but I would like to see a new IP from Nintendo. I mean, because I mean, look Splatoon... at look at what Splatoon did. Yeah. That's really funny. Um, I <laughs> what? see the reflection off your glasses because <laughs> it came up on my screen. Yeah, his um, his wallpaper changed to a picture of Splatoon. Yes, yeah. but um, Splatoon is great. No, and it was a really Splatoon good. Splatoon revolutionized the shooting game. Well, I, I wouldn't. I'll say it that. I way. wouldn't say it necessarily revolutionized, yeah, yeah. but it was really interesting to see Nintendo's take on a shooter. You look at let Splatoon versus Call of Duty versus battlefield versus battlefront versus you know insert other shooter here splatoon is nothing like them but exactly the same yeah like it plays how you would expect it to play although the although there are motion controls which i personally just turned off yeah um but like no the idea of like you know of instead of necessarily just going for kills but 
Um, instead of doing that, you know, just like trying to cover the arena in your ink, that was really interesting to see, and it yeah. was really different. It was a lot of fun. It still um, is a lot of fun. <clears throat> so, I would like to see Nintendo come out with a new IP. Um, they are always really cautious with that, though. Yeah. Um, because think about it, like. But I bet, I what bet have you... we gotten in recent years as far as new IPs go? We've gotten Splatoon. We got the Wonderful 101. Wonderful 101, which, which was a really was... underrated game. I don't know. I I couldn't get into it. I really liked that game. Um. But, like, we got Wonderful 101, and then... I'm trying to think of something else. And, like, the next one I can think of is Chibi-Robo, which was hey. all the way back on GameCube. Hey, Chibi-Robo's cool, though. I'm not, I'm not talking bad about Chibi-Robo. I really want to play the 3DS one. I haven't gotten it yet. I but... haven't, because Matthew hasn't opened his copy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too poor to uh, buy my own. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like, I don't know. I'd like to see what else Nintendo has up their sleeve. Yeah, me too. But it, yeah, if they have double the space Sony does at E3, yeah, we'll be watching E3. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all for this um, iteration of the Fandom Fighters podcast. Yep. Um, thanks, um, all y'all, for listening. So uh, long, farewell. <laughs> you ass out. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, if you want to follow us on your day to day social media, I um, you follow me on Twitter at um, at Seawood Director. Um, that's my main social media page. And then I also have YouTube, um, which, which you may be listening to this at. You might be listening to this yeah. whole podcast. Um, so, and I'm Seaward Director on there as well. Um, you want to plug yours? Um, yeah. You can <laughs> find me on Facebook or Twitter if you search uh, at the Dude Frank, or yeah, the Dude Frank Whack. Dude is spelled D O O D. And Whack is spelled W A K. Because I can't spell. <laughs> um, what are words? Yeah. <laughs> My YouTube channel, if you just search Frank Wack, you'll find me. Um, if you actually want to type it in, it's youtube.com forward slash Frank Wack Productions. Um, because YouTube won't let me change my, my URL. Again. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, thanks um, all y'all for listening, and we will see you next week. Next week. Next week on Fandom Fighters Podcast. <laughs> Bye, guys.